Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm a Loves You GB here on Flosstube, but also on Instagram and Etsy as well. Welcome to the Sunday Morning Briefing. This is the 5th of February and it is episode number 103, I think. So, the consensus of opinion from last week was that the microphone did make a bit of a difference. Um, the struggles that I'm having with the, um, the volume is I get so many mixed reactions. Some people say it's super quiet, some people say it's really loud, they have to turn me down. I even had one lady commenting that on two of her devices I'm quite quiet, on the other one I'm really loud. So there's not a lot I can do about individual settings on individual devices um, and I don't know why that seems to affect me and maybe not other floss tubers. But the consensus of opinion was that the microphone did make a bit of a difference last week so we're going to go with that. I'll do everything I can <laughs> um, to make the sound as good as, as possible. So. I've got some finishes. I've got a new release to actually show you. Um, I got around to adding it onto my Etsy store last week. Um, I've got quite a bit of stitching done this week. I'll give you a bit of a life update and why that is the case um, in a minute. I have got some haul, a reasonable amount of haul. I've also got right towards the end, I've got another one of those uh, try and treat boxes. So we'll have a look at one of those um, right at the very end, just in case that's not something that floats your boat but let me show you first of all the new releases and here they are so it's called come over this way it's called the panic button collection um, and you get all three designs plus the backs that you would need for those two because um, those two have backs designed for them um, and it's all about showcasing those fabulous buttons that you might have in your stash that you're not sure what to do with. I guess especially the slightly bigger ones, because um, it's always quite easy to add just a little button here and there to a project. But when you've got these beautiful big ones, or if you've got these beautiful big ones, it can be more difficult. If you haven't got the beautiful big ones, you can add beautiful small ones. You could, let me just show you. This is designed to have two big ones here. You could put a little collection of three or a little collection of two just there. You could put whatever you like on those. So that is the first one. And I've done that one with a velvet back, but you could put whatever back you wanted. You could do whatever colours you wanted. So this is a real stash buster. This is the panic button. And again, I've got a lovely mother of pearl button in the centre there and it does have a, a rear design to it and this is just a little piece of chenille trim but it would work equally well with rip rack or beads or whatever you want whatever you want to put on the side and then this one is what I'm calling the four corners so it's a repeating design in four different colours that's made into like a little I'm calling it a dimple cushion into a little dimple cushion. So all three of them are now available as charts on my Etsy for you to go and download. They are coloured charts. Let me just give you a little sneak peek. They are coloured charts and what I've tried to do also is to give you some guidance about how to put them together um, and about what sort of um, you're going to need for the backs, how much fabric you're going to need, that sort of thing. Now, it really depends on what size um, you want to stitch it on, what count you want to stitch it on, because if you stitch this in 14 count and had a bigger button, your pillow is going to be a different size. It might even be a different shape. It might be a long, thin one. So there's nothing to say, actually, you couldn't write panic and then put your button here and have a really long, thin cushion. So I've tried to give you some guidance about how to make it um, when I'm not even sure what size you're going to make it. So I've said things like I've left a three quarter inch gap around the top and the sides there and then a three quarter inch gap from where I thought the bottom of my button would be just to try and make it nice and balanced. Um, and the same is true with this one. With this one, I left a half inch gap at the top and the sides and the bottom just because I thought it suited it. So I've given you some 
some guidance about how I did it. OK, but you can then go on to make these your own. I've given you the sulky numbers. I've given you the DMC conversions if you like this colorway, but use whatever you've got. It really is a perfect one as a little a little stash buster. So those are on my my Etsy now, and that's what you'll get. Oops. There, stay. Right, let's have a look and see what I have been stitching this week. I have got my my spread all done. Pink is a new start, green is a finish. So according to my book, I have finished, oh, and I get a gold star for a finish as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things this month. Um, so I finished two ornaments, three ornaments, three button cushions, um, a pantini pantini and a swan by the year in the woods. And I must have finished the deer from the year in the woods as well. Where's that? Oh, I've got another finish there. I haven't marked that one off. <laughs> Let's have a look at this year in the woods then. I had this last week and I would had hoped that I would have finished. Where is it? I see you hidden in there, but I just can't reach you. I'd hoped that I would have finished the swans last week and I was just a little bit short. So I have now finished all three. So in January, I completely stitched the deer. Oh, mostly stitch the day. I can't remember if I'd finished it, started just before or not. And I finished off the swans. I didn't have much to do on the swans. I'm sat too close to the back of the chair because it's squeaking. There we go. And I have also then started on the spring ones, or started to finish off the spring ones, should I say. And there we are. I've worked actually i started on the one that had the least on it and that was the ferret so i've kind of got the whole shape of the ferret and i've started to add in some of the yellow flowers obviously it would look much better if i had um ironed it but i didn't <laughs> so i can't wait once i've finished this one and this one, that's 50% of the sal finished. So I will feel like I'm making really, really good progress on that. So that's my year in the woods. My goal is to finish the spring section by the end of this month. And actually, having just a couple of goals in the month has really helped me focus this month. So January, my goals were to finish the winter um, year in the woods, to stitch an ornament and to finish the Noel sampler. Now, the Noel sampler, where did I get to on that? Did I finish it? Not quite. But in my defence, I did run out of a thread, so I had to order another thread. So. It is very nearly done. Very, very nearly done. And I will be sending out the conversion once I have finished it completely. So I've done my other pyramid of trees there. I've added in a lot of doodads. I ran out of uh, Garrison Green, which was this colour. And I ran out of this colour, which I think is 613 and not 612, which is what I ordered. <laughs> because it wasn't the colour when it, when it arrived. So I'm going to have to put another order in. I'll see if I can ferret through my um, boxes and find a 613. I think it's the lightest. So it's very, very nearly done. I also started 
my caterpillar cross stitch so it's being housed in this black cab bag that I made a very long time ago and I said to you last week that I had dyed my fabric and I did start on the side that I thought I would start on which was the slightly paler side and again I'd ironed it or even finished this stitch there with just put that needle out of the way didn't realize it was a stitch with me did you <laughs> so there we go I've got the Edinburgh Castle to do uh, uh, the fish and chips in the basket and the Isle of Man in the outline but they are coming out once a month on the 26th so I've got a decent amount of time to do that <coughs> excuse me to do that finish and then today I started this this is remember me by scattered seeds samplers Tammy black and I've wanted to do this for ages, but I started this today. So today for me is the 4th of um, February because this is the anniversary. There's another stitch along. Hang on. This is the anniversary of my dad's passing. So in 2009, it's stitched on Vintage Country Mocha. And I ordered this from the Patchwork Rabbit this week. Plus some of the threads that I needed. So I started this this morning. So it looks like I've done quite a lot, but I've just kind of done a lot of outlining, which I think is the way I stitch. I see these people doing these beautiful kind of page finishes where they've got these straight lines where they've not strayed from the page or the motif, and they've finished all the motifs on that page. Whereas I like to find the edges and how big it's going to be and, and outline things and then fill them in. So watching uh, this video this evening when I want to do the editing I shall probably just carry on and fill this rose in and some of these leaves I don't think it's going to take very long to do but I had a good go at that this morning and those are the threads so I'll just show you what else I've got in this little box here because this little bag here because some of it is haul that's all just ended up in the same bag because it's sort of similar. I have started, as we've said, the Remember Me, which I've put back upside down in the bag. But I also ordered from Jeff P. Smith on um, eBay and then got the threads from Patrick Rabbit. Um, Mockingbird's Message. And, oh, can't see that one. Because Trudy's written me a nice note. Thank you, Trudy. Let's just put that one that way. Um, this is Gathering Together Pin Keep. So you can see all three of them would make a nice little set together. Um, I think there might even be another one. So those are in there. I also had ordered this one, which is the Jenny Bean and Friends. Um, friendship sampler I really like this it's bigger than I think it's going to be though 160 by 210 um, and it needs quite a lot of different threads so I picked that one up from them just because it's been on my radar for quite a while um, and I wanted to grab it and this one I got from a stash unload Lardy Dar Old Crow just really really liked it it's very little 88 by 66 and it's just DMC. And the reason it's in there is because a lot of the DMCs are pretty much the same colours as the pin keep that I've just started. So um, it's all in there. And then from Patchwork Rabbit, I grabbed this one, which is Autumn Gatherings by Brenda Gervais. Now, Patchwork Rabbit are taking pre-orders and they're actually going to Nashville. This is not the face of someone who's horrendously jealous. Um, so... Make sure you get your, your orders in. Make sure you email them. Let them know what you're looking for, um, and they can they can get it for you while they're there. They can they can just 
gather everything that you want. Um, and I, I am available to carry bags, just saying. But I've always liked this one. I've always liked this one. So I grabbed a few of the, a few of the threads for that one. So that is a little bit of haul, a little bit of plans, a little bit of what I've been up to. Now I have got quite a lot of stitching done this week, I will admit, because I did have an extra day this week. So on Wednesday, um, I was on strike. It's I've been teaching 22 years. It's the first time I have ever uh, had cause to strike. Um, I don't even think I've had the option to strike before. I'm not sure in my teaching career it's ever actually come to um, a strike. Anyway, so why? I just want to tell you a little bit about why I chose to, to strike. Um, we've been given a 5% pay rise, um, which is what a lot of other public sector workers have started on um, as, a, as a pay rise. But the thing that really gets my goat is that it's not a funded pay rise. So that 5% wage increase is coming directly out of the school budget. The school still gets exactly the same budget. And wages by far and away are the biggest thing that we have to pay for. So what it effectively means is that there's less money for maintenance, there's less money for IT, for equipment, for resources, for cleaning, all of those other things. Um, and so it should have been funded, I think, and that's why I chose to strike. Um, I also think we've got a huge issue with recruitment and retention. Um, I'm heavily involved in training PGC students and teachers in their first years of, of teaching. And um, it's not a pretty picture. We're very lucky in our school. We have a lovely, lovely school that people want to come and teach at. Um, although we don't have the pick of the staff like we used to. You'd put an advert out before and you'd have 11 or 12 applicants and you'd maybe have a field of five or six. That is not the case anymore. Um, the fields are much reduced and if you need to get somebody midterm uh, because of an illness or pregnancy or somebody decides to move mid-year that's very difficult because there just aren't the teachers coming through. Um, the dropout rate for teachers is extremely high something like 25% of, of newly qual qualified teachers stay for two years and then move on to something else. Um, after 10 years, 40% of teachers have left. So we've got a real crisis. We have got a real crisis. Um, and so I was part of a union that chose to strike. I voted to strike myself. Um, and so that's why I did it. I've got another strike day coming up on the 14th of February, unless something gets sorted. But um, it's just a backhanded way of underfunding education, as far as I am concerned. There is my rant. <laughs> You've got off lightly. <laughs> But yeah, that is the reason. That is the reason that I had an extra day. And do you know what? Even on that extra day, I kept thinking to myself, do you know what? There's things I could be doing. I should be doing this. I could be catching up on that. And another part of my brain thought, you are not getting paid today. Do not do anything. So I didn't. I actually stitched and I got my releases out. Um, I felt guilty all day. There we go. Right. Let's have a look at something else now. So let's do the freebie this is silver creek samplers now i actually don't know when this oh it is this year i was going to say i've not seen this before so i wondered if it was this year it's a freebie from silver creek samplers and it says do everything in love now this is charted in pink and red but i actually think that would be really nice in just some slightly unusual colors um almost like a green and a white I I'm seeing it in with the hearts in a white and then the do everything in love in a green so it's just not quite so Valentine's Day but it's it's something you could keep up all year round well you could do whatever color and keep it up all year round but I really like that so I will put that onto uh the notes down below and you can go and have a look at that and then I've got a bit of a giveaway so Ruthie from Crow's Feet Stitching sent me a message today and she sent me some charts uh, to share with you guys, really. And if you've seen me working with Ruthie before, you'll know that Ruthie does. She takes a sampler and she charts the sampler. 
but then what she'll do is she'll take elements and make smalls of those elements so you've got the option if you want to stitch the big sampler then you can if you want to take elements from it and make a pillow or pinky whatever you can so she's done that with this one there are two two um samplers so let's start with the samplers and then we'll talk about the pin keeps and the cushions that have come from each of them so this is the first one this is Anne Hardcastle 1844 so this is the sampler a long thin one and as usual with Ruthie you get a plethora of information about where the stitcher comes from so they are both uh, from Yorkshire is this one Yorkshire or does she yeah Halifax Yorkshire uh, North Yorkshire Halifax so this is the sampler so there's going to be four give four <laughs> four giveaways this uh, this week the first one is going to be the, the sampler so the sampler chart we're going to use the word an, where is it? An, a double n. So if you'd like to receive the sampler chart, then somewhere in your uh, wording down below, you can put the word an. But there are also these two lovely pin keeps. Okay. And they're fab. They come from this sampler. So you can see where the elements have come from. But if stitching the whole sample is not your thing, or you fancy a couple of other pin keeps, then this is the one to go for. Now you can enter for whatever you like, enter for everything. Okay, this one. Now, the word is going to be squirrel. It was going to be thighs, because this fella has got some awesome thighs. But I'm going to go with squirrel. Okay, I even joked with them. Um, Ruthie, that this might, this must be Chris Hoy with his uh, massive size. So the word is going to be squirrel. So if you'd like to stitch this one, then if you can use the word squirrel, then you can enter. But you can enter for both and squirrel. And then the next one. Now I didn't really have to look up to see if she was a Yorkshire girl because of the name. This is. Harriet Hepplethwaite. Hepplethwaite. Isn't she lovely? Look at that border. Amazing. So, if you would like to go for the sampler or be considered for the sampler, then let's go for the word Harriet. So, H A R R I E T. Harriet. <coughs> Excuse me. And then these are the cushions look at that bird i love that bird and i love this bottom one as well because ruthie had actually said to me that she thought the, the flower on this was quite reminiscent of my anarchos one the one that i'm going to be doing with um roxy flosco we've got a very similar flower on that one as well but look at that bird check out that bird so this one is going to be bird <laughs> So, Harriet Bird. And I'm going to draw it next week. Um, just because. Am I going to draw it next week? No, I'm going to do it two weeks. I'm just trying to think where half term is. That's all. I'm trying to work my way into half term. So, two weeks. We're okay for two weeks. So, make sure that you put those terms in your, um, in your comment if you'd like to enter for them. Now, there's been a lot of scams going on. You know, I would not comment on your comment in that way and ask you to um, get in touch with me, pay any bonds, pay any shipping, anything like that, anything like that. Um, I think what I'm going to do is that I am going to say that I am not going to comment. Even if you win, I'm not going to comment on your comment at the moment. OK, I will say your name on the video in two weeks time and i will put your name in the comments down below uh, in the drop down box sorry just flashed the microphone 
but I will not I will not comment on your comment. OK, so if anybody gets a comment on their comment, it is not me. It is some scam artists who could probably use their talents for far more use than they are currently doing. There we go. Right. What else have we got? What else have we got? I've got a little bit more haul. I've got, I've got a bit of fabric. I've got the fox and rabbit um, fabric of the month. And I've also got some bits of trim um, that I have purchased as well. So let's have a look at that. And then we'll be on to having a look at the taste box. So um, another sash and load purchase. This is called uh, Christmas Tide. It says Bright Be Thy Christmas Tide by Threadwork Primitives. I've always liked this one. Now, I actually bought these from the same lady whose husband made me the box for O'Tannenbaum. And I did say to her, I said, like, I think there's going to be there would be a big market for those if your husband wanted to. And apparently she's tried to persuade him before, but he's not a big fan of the idea. It's not what he wants to do at the moment. So um, so we have to respect that. But it's always there. What else did I get? I got some... This is also from uh, Patrick Rabbit. I got some Permin French Golden Needle. Now, I bought some more of this because I started stitching um, using the Tommy Lily threads and the Jacob of Modern Folk Embroideries uh, Winter Sampler um, on French Golden Needle. And I really liked the colour. So I only had a little bit of it. So I got, I got some more of that. This is my fabric of the month from crafty kate i get a 32 count fat eight now i don't know if you're going to be able to see this one it's a very very soft like pinky with little tiny bits of hints of like almost like a purple very it's trying to wash it out a lot but it is it is a very soft mottle so that's going to be a handy piece to have especially if i want something a little bit paler um the fox and rabbit this month the um um, um neutral the neutral this one is called western red cedar so it does have a more pinky tone to it although it is definitely a neutral. And then the colour this month, I absolutely love the colour this month. This is called Pine Bark. Look at that. So this is from, I presume it's Bren's attempt at growing bonsai trees again. And this is the sort of colourway that he was seeing on the bark. So that is oh I've got some different different colouring down there. So that is amazing. So that is the colourway or the colour version because they do two clubs, a neutral and a colour. I should just open the neutral just so that you get a better there we go. It is probably a little bit pinkier than it's showing. And then I had my first purchase from Northgate Needlecraft. Uh, so they're down in Great Yarmouth. Um, and the reason that I purchased from them is because they were having a little bit of a scissor sale on Kelmscott scissors. Now, I love me a pair of Kelmscott scissors and I may have over ordered <laughs> because they were doing buy one, get one half price. So I shall show you those in a minute, but they also had a piece of 32 count tin roof, Weeks Dye Works tin roof. Now this is old weeks. I quite like old weeks. Um, and I like this kind of greeny colour to it. And I even had a nice note from uh, the owner telling me to make sure I keep it in the acid free paper. Um, because putting it into other things can change the colour of it. So, the scissors. Now I can show you three of the pairs that I bought. One pair 
is a present for somebody so i can't show you this one so i'm going to show you so these are buy one get one half price so i'm going to show you the three that i can show you so i bought a little pair of those i absolutely adore helmscott scissors i've got quite a few pairs you can never have too many i don't think it's possible to have too many pairs of scissors so there's those there's these ones these are called so those are called blooming cute these are called roly poly roly poly how cool are those can't really see the shape you won't be able to see the shape if i put my hand over them will you there like that and these ones i've wanted these ones for ages these are called slime boot scissors and these are they so witch's boot scissors how fabulous are those so definitely go and check them out you can purchase them in store obviously for the discount you can purchase them over the phone for the discount um, but it doesn't do it automatically on the website i did used i did buy mine through the website but i had arranged uh, with the owner what to do i want to call her susie and now i'm fighting that i've got it wrong i bet susie she's lovely absolutely lovely lady and the other thing that i had arrived today is let's just put those out of the way some more trip now, I'm very conscious of the fact that sometimes what happens when I tell you guys about a really good place to get stuff, you do that. You go and get stuff. And then when I go back to get the other bit that I wanted, it's gone. So I have very much got used to putting my order in before I tell you um, about the shop. So and what I was telling you about last week was this trim. This is the trim that I've used on my smalls. So it's a very fine, probably better see it on the red actually, it's a very fine chenille. And it's actually the type of chenille that you can use for knitting. So I picked up an assorted bag, which as you can see there is 9 95 for 15 different colours. And there's two metres in each. And because that is an assorted bag, you don't get any choice over what you get in there. I picked up some of the smaller bags where you've got a bit of a better idea about what it's going to be. So you get five threads of two meters for three ninety five. So I've got a berries pack. It's got that nice red in it and the darker red. I got a greens. And I also got a spring. And these these are absolutely fabulous. They're so easy to attach to your project. And because they're the, the slim ones, they, they're perfect for the proper smalls. I also picked up, not from there, these are from Amazon, a couple of reels of ribbon. Now this one, I'd seen somebody finish off a design with this ribbon and I really, really liked it. So I went hunting for it. I think it may be even uh, the lady who is organising the 20, the 12 smalls in 23 Car at caroling 55 i'll put the details down below of that particular kind of stitch along that i'm doing although i haven't finished mine for last month the idea is that you stitch an ornament and that you finish it um it must be 12 ornaments in 23 you stitch it and you finish it in that month so i've stitched mine and i haven't finished it so that was one of her tips was to try and finish them in the same month but i haven't done that but i have got some I've now got some thread to do it with and some um, ribbon. Right. Let me just put this back before I lose it. Now, I think that just leaves me with the treat box. Just it out. So if watching me eat stuff from other countries is not your bag, I can see how it might not be. Oh, 
can't wait. Then I will say cheerio to you now, and I will see you next week. Stay classy, stitches. If you do, then you will have probably seen these treat boxes before. The idea is that they send you out one per month, and they're from a specific country, and you get treats from that specific country. Now, I have opened this one already, and I did query this one with them because it's not from a specific country. This is one of their kind of global treat boxes. So it comes from all sorts of different places. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to tell you exactly where each treats come from. But if you want to have a go, um, you can get 15% off your first box for a subscription. Um, and there's a code, which is just Mama Loves You GB. I'll put all the information down below if you want to get a treat box, because I think they're quite good fun. So this is how it came packaged, although I think I'm pretty sure the crisps were inside. I, I've had a ferret through. So we've got artificial chicken flavoured crackers. It's interesting that we need to point out that they are artificial chicken. Are they artificial chicken or are they artificial crackers? We'll try that in a minute. We have also got, now these look delicious, a wafer roll with a delicious coconut filling. That sounds good. I'll be up for that. I'm just going to move my little uh, pin cushion so I can see that we don't want to get artificial chicken on those. <laughs> okay, what else have we got? Some extra strong mint. I can buy those in the shop, so that's fine. I don't need to worry about those. Um, a best choice custard cream cake. I've not seen those before, so I don't know where they come from. Chocito. Don't know what that is. Well, I don't know where it comes from. Um, little tiny. This, D-I-S. If you know where any of these come from, do let me know. This is like a World Treats box, like I say. It feels like a cracker, like a, a wafer. Oh, now that's going to be interesting. It's like a little, I think I've even got it upside down. Do you know what? I don't even know. I think it's that way up. Apologies if this is your language. If you can tell me what it is or what it says, that'd be great. Um, a milk eater, vanilla shake candy. Um, quite a few of these are repeats. Jacobina, fresh and crispy. I think that might be a nut wafer as well. Oh, I've got another one of those little sweets. I think that might be a lemon flavoured, one of the greens. And then... that i have no idea what it is i don't know if i'm in the mood for chicken tonight i don't feel like chicken tonight right let's go through some of the other stuff then um i might i might save some of it for next week let's have a look at this little bis let's see what this is It's essentially a stale chocolate wafer. Don't need to wait the second half of that. It's just a stale chocolate wafer. Right. I want to try one of these. It says dragonfly on it, and it looks like it has some either Chinese or Japanese characters on the top. But the rest of it's written in English. Oh, product of Malaysia, beg pardon. Now, I've been to Malaysia, into Borneo. Beautiful, beautiful place. Loved it. So, ooh, they smell coconutty as well. nice 
you know what make that even better? Ice cream. I'm not seeing that it's got it's not got much in the centre though. You can taste the coconut. But this with like a goo um, um an oozy filling. That's false advertising. It's not what's going on in there. Right. Let's have a look at this. Milka. M no, Milkita. I didn't bring a drink up either. It looks like a chew. It's nice, but it's a lot harder than I was imagining. Seconds. So it was nice. But the bit that you've just missed in between, if you imagine Ermintrude, the cow from the uh, Magic Roundabout, where she, all she does is. That was about it for about about five minutes. That, that took a bit of getting through, to be perfectly honest. And I'm still not sure I've got rid of it all. Right, this little green one. This could be super sour. And I'm going to save the Chokito for next week, I think. It's a nice little lime green ball. Ooh. That's very refreshing, actually. I'm still not sure it's lime. I can't really see what the picture is on the front. Could be apple, actually. I'm not sure it's apple. I've no idea what that flavour is meant to be. Because it doesn't look... There's the camera. It doesn't really look like a lime either on the on the thing. It's something white with seeds. Oh. Oh, I did have it up the wrong way. Yeah, if you can read that, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna be really rude and try it both ways because I'm really not even sure which way up because the writing goes one way and then the other way. What flavour it is? Let me know. The other one I think is definitely orange, but I'm not sure about this one. Anyway, there we go. We'll save the chicken crisps for next week and a couple more of the other bits and bobs but they're great fun these treat boxes so um make a really great present i'll put all the details down below if you stay with me for this long <laughs> thanks very much i'll see you next week stay classy stitches